Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at fractals, which are mathematical structures or shapes which are self-similar across different scales. This means no matter how far we zoom in, we'll always find infinite complexity. The main way we generate these in code is through recursion. To explain what recursion is, let's use the example of a tree. At each branch of a tree, two more branches are created. At each one of these branches, another pair of branches are created, and so on. This is why we get repeating patterns and fractals, and shows how we can use recursion to create them. While that was a nice simple example, let's now take a look at how we can generate more interesting shapes using recursion. More specifically, we're going to be learning about L-Systems. L-Systems consist of an axiom and a set of rules. The axiom is just the sentence we start off with. We then apply each of our rules one by one to create the next generation of that sentence. Let's take a look at how this works in action with a simple example. It's interesting to note how quickly these sentences can grow. That's due to the recursive nature of the sentences, and that's going to cause some very interesting growth when we look at the actual fractals later in this video. Before we can take a look at the 2D fractals, we need to understand what the symbols in our sentences mean. F means forward, drawing a straight line in the current direction. Plus means turn right, and minus means turn left by a preset angle delta, which is different for each fractal shown. Any other symbol you see has no physical effect, but is still necessary to create the correct pattern. Let's now take a look at this first fractal together. This is the first iteration of the Koch snowflake. If you know what that is, uh, nice, have this gold star I guess. Anyway, I'll show you the current generation in the top left, as well as the axiom and rule set in the top right. Let's take a look. As we go through each generation, we can start seeing the fractal become more and more complex. If we compare the fourth generation here to the first, we can also see some of that self-similarity we were talking about at the start. We can of course keep on going, but I'd actually have to break Minecraft's build height for that, which uh, I'll save for another video. How about we take a look at the rest of the fractals? Moving on to the 2D trees, these each use a bracket system to denote the branches, which allows for backtracking by the program. Now the main reason I'm making this video is to talk about fractals in 3D space. Before we move on, we'll have to update our current rule set to allow for 3D rotations. Feel free to pause and read the updated rules. Here is the 3D counterpart of the 2D Hilbert's curve we looked at earlier. This is known as a space filling curve, which means it should pass through every point in the unit square, or in this case, the unit cube. We can again see the same self-similarity going on here, as well as seeing the very fast rate of growth, which is representative of fractals. In this fifth generation of the curve, we can actually see the program following the sentence in real time. Isn't that cool? Now you understand how we make simple fractals, let's dive into creating trees. Here's a rule set I found in a mathematical paper. If we take a look at the tree, we can notice it has a more bush-like structure. One other thing is that the pattern is quite symmetric. This is because at each intersection point we have three branches that grow out. This pattern is quite realistic, but why don't we have a tinker around with some settings such as branch length to see how the tree changes. Already we can see that this tree is much larger. Even with a tiny height change of two blocks, we'll get a much bigger change in overall tree height. Something about this specific rule set is that branches never decay or become shorter, meaning the tree will just grow larger and larger with more iterations. Another reason the tree grows so fast is that during each iteration, each forward statement is duplicated, resulting in exponential growth. 
This means that even small changes in length can have a large impact on the tree's height. Let's increase the length one more time to see just how large our tree gets. This tree is already a lot larger, so we'll probably stop here with the height. One more thing to note is that it's quite difficult to come up with realistic looking rule sets for these custom trees. My own attempts didn't look so great, which is why I used this example from the paper I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, it didn't go into great detail about 3D trees, which I think is a bit of a shame, as they're so visually interesting. If you'd be interested in looking at this topic more, please let me know. Before we finish up with the height, let's also try with a very small tree. Well, uh, it looks like we ran into a slight problem. The leaves which I coded don't actually change with the branch length, so they're a bit too big here. Before we finish up with this example, let's also have a go at changing the radius to 2.5 blocks. While the thickness of the branches starts at 5 blocks wide, it should decrease as the tree grows larger, just like in real life trees. One way we can make our trees more realistic is by incorporating some randomness. What does that actually mean? Previously, each symbol corresponded with one specific rule. Now, each symbol can correspond to multiple rules which are selected at random. This creates more unique trees, mimicking the variation we see in nature. Let's take a look at another randomly generated tree and see if we can spot any differences. We can see that the branch structure of this new tree is already a lot more natural, with the branches more spread apart. The rule set here is very similar to the previous non-random rule set we used earlier, except that at each intersection we don't always get a group of three branches, but usually one or two. If we look at this tree, we can actually see we got quite lucky with a lot of these three branch intersections, but up here we only have a single branch. We can also try changing the angle here, so let's say around 35 degrees for each rotation. This tree has grown in a lot more interesting way. It looks like the angle here is way too large, which is what caused the tree to grow into the ground. It almost looks like a completely new tree rotated on its side. When you mess around with the angles, we can get vastly different looking trees, just like this one. One more thing we can change is the number of iterations. We would expect to see that the tree grows larger, but in reality this growth will be quite small. This is because the length of the branches decreases with each iteration as we move up the tree. This is due to the decay factor we multiply by each iteration. What we'll be able to notice is that there should be much more leaf growth on the tree, but let's take a look. So it looks like the program has generated a pretty realistic tree, even though it took almost 5 minutes to fully grow. That's probably it for the explanation of the program, so let's take a look at a showcase I set up to see what it would be like to play with these trees in the game. As we take a walk through this lovely forest, I just want to thank everyone for watching this far into the video, as it took a long time to make. If you have any suggestions on what I should cover or do next, please let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, maybe even drop a subscription. With all that out the way, I hope you enjoy this relaxing end to the video. Thank mm -hmm. you.